My name is Ian Kirkpatrick. I am an apprentice at Hall Automotive. Funny story, so I came here, I was doing nothing for like a year. I was just going to community college for a year, year and a half, and doing basic education, basic school. My parents just wanted me to get a job. They didn't want to get back to the restaurant life because I hated it. I'd get off at two in the morning, I was a dishwasher, or I was flipping burgers, or it just wasn't for me. And my parents need the head service people of the whole entire Hall Automotive. He had mentioned, uh, hey, give us a call. We were always looking for a lot of attendance. They interviewed Ian and uh, he was selected as a lot attended here. Then he was moved up to, to Quick Loop. The first time I, I met him, I wasn't really, I mean, I, I knew he was cocky. He had that cocky look about him. So I wasn't too impressed about him because I thought maybe he was gonna, you know, be a lazy type worker and think he could get away with things. That's just the impression that I got from him in the very beginning. I was on Quick Loop for almost a year, like nine months. Some people are on there longer, some people on there, some people won't be on there two months. It all depends on, you know, what tech wants you or how many techs need. It's just a matter of time, really. I never even changed the oil in my life. First thing I'll quickly, I'm, I'm racking up this car and I'm like, this car didn't fall down. I was like, <laughs> There's so much pressure, I think, on kids right now when they get out of high school that they have to have a career path planned out. Ian was 17 when he graduated and it's hard to know at that age what you want to do. I played tennis at high school. I was a uh, number two seed and we went to the regionals. I started fading away from the tennis. I got real into music, music production, and I would sit there every single day outside of my room. I started off with a laptop and some headphones and I was just making beats left and right, left and right, left and right, left and right. That's all I did. When he gets into something, he really gets into it, the whole focus on it, uh, sometimes to a fault. Uh, because when you, when you have that kind of focus, sometimes you need to remember that you need balance in, in your life as well. Uh, so he uh, got into his music when he was in uh, uh, his early teens, and uh, that occupied a lot of his time uh, while he was in high school. You know, my grades were horrible. You know, I had, I had horrible grades. I didn't care about school. Yeah, I just kept on making music. I think he always struggled academically. He is very competent. But Ian is the sort that when he wants to do well, he will do well. Um, but if he, if he doesn't, then he's going to just sort of get by. It's the fact of, of uh, sitting down in a classroom. I'm like a go-getter type of person, you know, if I'm going to sit down, like, I need to be doing something. At that time, yeah, I, was, I wanted to be a music producer. And I was, getting a real, I was getting a real big buzz within the city. I was having, you know, a bunch of people hit me up to make music. I was actually on the mixtape of Soldier Boy. I made a beat for him, and uh, that was kind of like the peak of like my music career. And then everything started kind of going. I started getting more trouble. Everything started to kind of go downhill. I made music with a close friend of mine. His name was Tony, and we started making music left and right like every day. We were in the studio, we were up at three o'clock in the morning, we would wake my parents up. His friend would come over on Friday afternoons and not leave until like Sunday. He spent a lot of time uh, with the family. We, we kind of felt like he was part of our family. Yeah, senior year, when I started graduating, Tony moved back to Richmond and Tony was shot and killed. That had a huge impact on Ian and his outlook on life and uh, he, he, he changed almost overnight after that. Yeah. Sold all my music stuff the next week, gave my laptop to his family. I was in a deep depression for a while, and I was just like, dude, I don't know what to do with my life. I was like, this is just crazy, it's unreal. Because you're 18 years old, you feel invincible, and then that feeling of invincibility just, yeah, goes away. My name is David Stiles, and I am the automotive technician. If you don't know him, you think he's a rough guy. I mean, he, but he, David's all about business. He's very friendly. The guys love him. He teaches well. He's a very good instructor. So everybody seems to gravitate to him and listen to what he has to say. I've uh, been here at Hall for 20 years. I came out of the Votech program as an AS student that placed me in a job at a very young age of 16. He's my uh, mentor, and he has no mercy on anyone. No, no mercy on anyone. I thought Ian was a punk when I first met him. And he would jab at me and make fun of me and try to do all kinds of things like that, but I'm resilient and he doesn't know. David, I think, uh, was a 
pivotal influence on Ian. Ian uh, looks up to David uh, tremendously. He doesn't want to hear any excuses if you messed up. You messed up, it's your fault, you fix it, you figure it out. If you can't figure it out, then you come to him. Absolutely, I feel like a big brother to him. I don't have any brothers myself, so he adds uh, some value to my life. I like coming to work and I like being able to teach him because I feel like he takes away what I'm trying to project. So once David Stiles took him under his wing, he completely changed. His attitude, his work ethic, everything about him, it was a, it was a fresh, refreshing thing. From what I understand, uh, Mr. Siles has a uh, work ethic that's uh, equal to or greater than, than Ian's. So uh, there was uh, probably a good match there. And I, I saw a switch take place when we started talking about uh, David Siles at the, at the dinner table. Siles had a huge impact on, uh, on, on him. I see him the most. I'm probably seeing him more than my family. <laughs> you know, I see him every day for 10 hours. His work ethic, his way of you know, approaching the car, it's like, he's definitely a respectful person. At the time, I wasn't as disciplined. I didn't really know much about, you know, how my brain works and stuff. I had to study myself throughout the time until like how I am now versus how I am four years ago is com completely different. Yeah, being an automotive technician was a good choice. It definitely was a good choice. Um, it's a skill that I know that I always have. It's a industry that's gonna keep on growing. Oh, I'm extremely proud of him. Just, just seeing what he's done over the last couple of years and the, and the growth and he's gone from, I think, a boy to he's a man. And I sometimes I have to stop myself and realize that. But very, we're very, very proud of him. I believe Ian has a bright future here in this facility. He's done great. Everybody here loves him. Everybody gravitates to him. And I think he has a bright future here and I can see him being here for years and years. You can walk in one day and it's, it's going to be a bunch of state inspections, oil changes, or the next day you, you know you have an engine that needs to be replaced. The bottom of the line for this business you have to be on it at all times.